Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, we're going to pick up our study in Exodus and Revelation in comparison to what happened in the wilderness, the plagues of Egypt also. But before we get any further into the plagues, I wanted to bring this to your attention. The earth is opening up. They call it crustal displacement. And it's happening all over the world. It's happening a lot in the United States, but it is happening worldwide. You know, our earth is going through something. A lot of stress on it uh, from all kinds of reasons. We're not gonna go into the reasons. We know it's happening. We know what God said. And when we look into Exodus, when the earth opened up, it's Exodus 15, and they had been delivered from Pharaoh and out of Egypt. And verse 1 says, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Okay, this same song will be sung by the body of Christ, God's elect, when they are in the wilderness. Okay? Verse 2, The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Yes, everyone, the Lord is a man of war. He's fighting this spiritual war, this physical war for us. Yes, he is. And he teaches our fingers to war. Well, the main thing we should be doing with our fingers and our hands is praying. This is a spiritual war. This is part of Ephesians 6. This is our armor. Okay, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host hath he cast into the sea. His chosen captains are also drowned in the Red Sea. Well, that was Egypt. That was when, they, when Moses parted the waters. And today, chariots are not the chariots of old. No, they are war machines, armies that are not of God. There is a spiritual and a physical connotation to it. And he drowned them in the Red Sea. The, the children of Israel got across, parted the Red Sea. Hey, I don't know. He probably used a tsunami. You know, God uses natural means to do his supernatural ways. Yes, he does. And it is supernatural because it's perfected. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. Thy right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. And the greatness of thine excellence, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upon upright as a heap and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea the enemy said i will pursue i will overtake i will divide the spoil my lust shall be satisfied upon them i will draw my sword my hand shall destroy them thou didst blow with, with thy wind the sea covered them they sank as lead in the mighty waters who is unlike unto thee o lord among the gods who is like thee glorious in holiness fearful in praises doing wonders Thou stretched out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them up. Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in strength unto thy holy habitation. The people shall hear and be afraid, and sorrow shall take hold of the inhabitants of Palestinia. Then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab trembling shall take hold upon them. All the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Fear and dread shall fall upon them by the greatness of thine arm. They shall be as the stone till thy people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over which thou hast purchased. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance in place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. For the horse of Pharaoh went in with his chariots, 
and with his horsemen in the sea. And the Lord brought again the waters of the sea upon them, but the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. Now remember, <clears throat> this is talking about when Pharaoh chased them out into the wilderness. They were, they were heading out of Egypt, and Pharaoh decided to come after them. Okay, And Moses parted the sea. And like I said, God probably used a tsunami or whatever in supernatural ways. <clears throat> so, verse 20, and Miriam the prophetess, now she was the sister of Aaron, so she was also Moses' sister, took a timbrel <clears throat> in her hand and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances and Miriam answered them sing ye to the Lord for he hath triumphed triumph gloriously the horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness of Shur they went by they and they went three days <clears throat> in the wilderness and found no water and when they came to Merah they could not drink of the waters of Merah for they were bitter therefore the name of it was called Merah I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to tell you something very, very significant about this, about Mara. Remember, I've told you in my testimony of things that I've been through, I told you that I was facing cancer in my lung, in my right lower lobe of my right lung, and hemorrhagic masses that were very large in my ovaries and this was three years ago and what's really strange is that I knew God was taking me on a journey he even warned me before I even knew of the diagnosis and what I was going to have to go through and thank you Lord for delivering me because I didn't even have to go through chemo or radiation and, and he delivered me I mean he healed me miraculously healed me by the blood of the lamb everybody I didn't even have to have my ovaries removed I'm sitting here with them today and even though I had to have my right bottom half of my lung removed I did not have to go through radiation or chemo they miraculously found it by the hand of God looking at my abdomen my gallbladder and just happened to catch it this large mass in my lung. And so, what's strange here and why this ties in is because my doctor's name was Dr. Mara. He was my cardiothoracic surgeon who removed the bottom portion of my lung. And God had told me prior to that, I was really seeking him. Didn't I knew I didn't feel good. But I had no idea. I thought it was my gallbladder. And I still have my gallbladder today, by the way. I was having gallbladder attacks. But, you know, God just used that to uh, get them to find the bigger thing. And so I was seeking him greatly. And I thought he was leading me to write a book. And I thought he was leading me to talk about my 40 years in the wilderness. I thought he was leading me to go around to churches and teach on the truth of abortion. I thought that was what he was doing. I really did. I, was, I, I really thought that's what he was going to use me to do. And so I knew I was going to be healed, though. I knew it. I took communion every single day once I got the diagnosis. Took it every day up until the day I went into the hospital for my surgery. And... <laughs> I thought that this was going to be this grand deliverance before I knew I was that sick and that so many things were wrong with my body. I thought I was going into this grand deliverance. I thought that uh, I was going to get all my problems answered. I thought that I was going to be, I knew my life was going to change. I, I saw my life flash in front of my eyes, everyone. I really did. Not that I thought I was going to die. 
it was that God was just showing me this is all old and I'm putting it away and now it's anew. But I knew not to take life for granted at the same time. But I was not feeling that I was going to die. Now this was before I knew anything was going on with my body. So here I am, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the countdown of the days and things are getting worse and worse and I'm getting sicker and sicker and feeling worse and worse. And then I get that news. And I've told you my testimony on all that. But the strange thing was that my cardiothoracic surgeon's name was Dr. Mara. And this was at the same time God was revealing to me about the behind the veil thing. And he was removing the veil for me, everyone. That's exactly what he was doing. My veil, my loved one's veils, those that were closest to me going to take some people off the bus, going to put me through some real questioning of reality. What is reality? Because I'm going to tell you something. When you're in a delusion and you don't, you, your soul is telling you certain things and you don't want to believe it. You don't, you can't see how God could work that way, right? So you believe a delusion. You're believing, it's just like when I was talking about worry, everyone. Worry is a delusion. Worry is manifesting in your mind situations that have not happened and are probably not going to happen. Think about every time you've worried and you've stayed up all night and you get no sleep and sometimes it goes on for a long time because you're plagued by your worries. And then the wor you know, nothing that you thought was going to come of it did. Think about that. I mean, you prayed. God could, God changed it. So that's why we are to pray and not worry because worry is really a lack of faith. God showed me that. So, but he'll let, he'll let it go to where you think you're going to fall off the cliff, everyone, because our faith is being tested. That's the truth. Our faith is being tested. He's taking you and putting you in the fire. So, what does Mara mean? It means bitter water. Well, what's going to happen in Revelations? Bitter water from wormwood. Think about this spiritually. See, what's in the spiritual will manifest in the physical. And that's why Revelations is a spiritual, physical book. No one can tell you it's all physical. And no one can tell you it's all spiritual. Because it's not. It's both. Because the evil spiritual parts of man, humanity, the earth, what's in the earth, the spirits are going to manifest. They're going to come, come out of people, start acting. You're going to see people who are what they are. Yes, we're seeing it today, aren't we? So this is what God is showing us. So yes. While Dr. Mara was performing a life-saving surgery on me and removing the bottom of my right lung, boy, did I have to swallow some bitter waters. And boy, did I have to go through some real questions of what is what and what's behind the veil of my own veil, the ones I loved the most. And it was bitter to drink, but it was also the most liberating part of my walk I've ever had in my life because you want to know why that is when I learned I had to trust the Lord no matter what and not believe everything I see and I hear or worry about or anything like that and that everybody could leave me everybody could turn on me everyone could betray me and he is there and when he is there, you don't need anyone else because you can't trust even your most trusted human being in your life that you trust. You can't. You can't trust them more than you trust the Lord. You have to trust in the Lord. You have to press into him. Listen, I told you I was like in a hurricane. I felt like a hurricane had come over my life. All I could do was hang on to my Savior's feet for all dear life. 
See, before I went in for that surgery, before the total revealing of the veil, and before I had to drink the bitter waters, even though that is what that is the name of the doctor who performed the surgery that God put me on the path to go to that very doctor. He was speaking through those things. And I was, while everybody else was freaking out, they thought I was going to die. I did not feel I was going to die. God reassured me I was not dying. I was not going to die. I was like surfboarding with Jesus. I just stood on the surfboard and let him guide and I hung on to him. And it rose me above the waves, the storm, the tempest of the waves. Yes, it did. But then I went into the real deal. So this is a lot like this. <laughs> that is what Exodus is like. That is what Revelations is like. God was giving me a little preview. And he was using that to bring me into his protective wings, to trust in him, to come out of the storm of the world. And, and look, look, you got to realize that the most person you trust and love the most could turn into a demon right in front of you because listen we're all human beings and just because someone professes Christ someone who knows the word does not mean that they're not going to have some impurity in them spiritual whether they wherever they picked it up so this is why we have to be very careful what we watch what we listen, what we hear, what we see, because it infects us. Just like if you went around someone with a virus. And if, if we invite him in, it's going to come in. Satan cannot go where he's not invited. So this is where we get off the track when we say, oh, Christians cannot be affected by a, by a evil spirit. Oh, yes, they can. Yes, they can. If they are not pressed in and completely washed in the blood with the love of Christ in their hearts and rendered their hearts to God, then their hearts are tainted. And let me tell you, those little demons can tear them up. And this is how Christians will be believe a strong delusion, everyone. And here's the strange thing too. At the same time I was going through that, I accidentally found a large hole in my yard that was turning into a sinkhole. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. And it's under a big pine tree, a huge pine tree that's in my front yard. And I started noticing the ground was sinking around it. And I started to notice when I was raking and moving some things in the yard, I couldn't do a lot, but what little bit I could go do for just 15 minutes, I would get outside and do something in the yard if I could. And my whole yard, everything, all my beautiful azaleas and everything had been plagued with some kind of disease. My yard used to be so pretty and it all died. And when I looked at it, I just felt deaf. And God told me, he says, just each day, take a little something, clean it up, and plant something pretty. Give, give life. Give life. And so I was just out there messing around for a few minutes, because that's all the stamina I had. And when I raked, pulled back some pine straw, I found these huge holes. One was so huge, it could swallow a big man. And I was very concerned. And I thought, oh my gosh, this, this is right around my pine tree. It was following my water line, but my water line was not leaking. There was no water in it. It was just a big hole. And so I am in South Carolina, and we are known to have sinkholes. Florida is worse, but South Carolina has it too. And so... I was really concerned and it was really making me see that this tree could go. So after I had my surgery, I had called a 
several people to come out and look at this and they all gave me different opinions. These were experts in foundation and ground. I had called the city also, I had called the county because I it was following the water line too. But I got different opinions and no one was wanting to own up to it. So I knew I was gonna have to fix it myself because I didn't wanna be responsible for my large pine tree falling on other people. And, and because if it fell on the street and someone was driving by, it could kill them. Or if a little child was walking by and fell in that hole or anything, because it was near the street. And so I eventually just called this landscaper and he came and delivered sand and dirt. And he couldn't believe, he could not believe how deep that hole was and how much it took to fill it in. And here's the thing. When he came to look at the holes before he filled them in, there was nests of venomous, poisonous copperheads in there. My cats were out there and even killing them and bringing them to us. And I had started to see these copperheads for like a year. And my dog had even brought one in and showed it to me. And in the midst of all this, I lost my dog my beloved little doggy, and she died of cancer at the same time. I was going through a lot of things. I can't even tell you all the things that happened, but those were the significant things, and I knew they meant something spiritually, and I knew all about the earth opening up and swallowing Pharaoh and his chariots in the sea. I knew all about the, the sons of Korah who went against Moses in the wilderness and the earth opened them, opened up and swallowed them, their whole tents and their homes. I knew God was showing me something. He was showing me what was coming. He was showing me that I had to get this right, that I had to do what he was laying on my heart to do. And though I had an idea and a vision of what he was doing, no, it was completely different. And my deliverance didn't look like what I thought it was going to look like. And every day I told you that I come here and I share God's word and his truth with you. The chains just keep breaking off and breaking off. My situation hasn't changed as far as am I free? Am I totally well right, yet, right now? Well, no, I'm not. No, I'm in captivity, but I'm in his captivity. And that's exactly how it's going to be in the wilderness. We're not going to be out in the world, everyone. We're going to be under his captivity in the wilderness. And we each personally have to trust in him. That is the bottom line. And that's why we have to test the spirits. Because he's going to show us. It's the Holy Spirit. It's going to go way beyond who professes the name of Jesus Christ and that he came in the flesh, everyone. It's going to go really past that. Because the devil's getting really tricky. He's upping the ante, everyone. So with that said, we're going to go on. Because... In this chapter, that is when God gave them, made the water sweet. He gave them everything they needed. He gave them manna. Look, God's not going to give you a four-star hotel and a big steak on your plate. All right? It's not about comfort, everyone. Because we don't, we, if we're comfortable, we're not moving forward in the Lord. That's right. So what we thought was blessings takes away our, our comfort. When we're comfortable, we're not seeking him. We're not pressing into him, everyone. Yep, that's the truth. Because when you got everything in your way and you're comfortable, the Lord is not going to move. He can't bring you close to him that way. And that is why he's letting what's happening in this earth and on this world happen and here's the thing too about the trust okay how we trust others is going to be by first trusting in him and believing in his will and believing what he's doing and that he's doing a work he's not going to let us get attached too attached to a person a thing an object he's not because then that thing is hindering our walk. You know, there are many Christians waking up 
there are to what I've been warning and heeding, and I know it's not because they listen to my messages. <laughs> they have their own little ministries, and many are coming out of this confusion, and I praise you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord, because they're starting to see that we cannot be part of the political beast. It is not our friend. Think about it like this, everyone. This political beast is in the end times. And though God will use it to bless you up to a point until we're fully in his captivity, you need to think of that beast, the political beast, what's going on in our nation, what's going on in the world with politics and nations. You need to realize, just put in place of the beast in your mind as Pharaoh and what happened to the Egyptians <clears throat> when God put the plagues down and tore the children of Israel away from Pharaoh because that's exactly what's happening. The beast that is, it's the first beast of Revelations, it's the fourth beast of Daniel. It's Pharaoh, everyone. You cannot look to Pharaoh to deliver you. You can't because you're gonna see what you thought you wanted turn into a tyrant. Get his heart hardened to bring about the prophecies of the end times. Get off the beast, everyone. This is what God is telling me. In my heart, my soul, in my messages, get off the beast. You know who rides the beast? The whore, the harlot. Listen, there is a spiritual harlot and there's actually a city. Because, see, the harlot sits on the waters, which are the nations and the people. This is why I did that little video yesterday. This was no dig at Lady Gaga. It, they're just using her. Using her as a mouthpiece, as an artist to express herself. Yeah. It's all there, everyone. Come out of her, my people. Come out of her. You want to go to the wilderness with God. You want to. It's safety there. Everything you need is there. Comforts, maybe not. But what you need, what you really, really need is there. So you need to start looking at this political beast. That is exactly what it is. I don't care what face it puts on. I don't care what words come out of its mouth. Get off this political bandwagon. Because the very thing that you are crying out for is going to bite you going to come back on you and bite you. We have to come out of her. She's going to be destroyed. She's going to be destroyed. And it's going to move around, everyone. The King of Tyre was a port of a port. The most heavily traded world economic port. That is New York City today, everyone. And yes, they're going to act like a friend to Israel because they're all obsessed with Jerusalem. They're being drawn to Jerusalem. <clears throat> Please just listen. Just step away from it, everyone. Step away. It's poison. It's Mara. It's bitter waters. It's wormwood. It's going to turn very bitter. It's going to suffer destruction, spiritually and physically. Yes, it is. So let's distinguish the two. This is Revelation 17 and 18. One is the spiritual, one world religion. It's going to look oh so holy, oh so Christianity, oh so one world religion. The Pope is preparing everybody for this. He is. Believe me. 
and Revelation 18 is the commerce. Now, what sits over both of those in that very city? The world headquarters of the United Nations, everyone. And the Pope is right in there. And so are Christians. I showed you that Saturn stone that they or have in their meditation prayer room and Christians help bring that in. Very prominent Christians because, oh, let's all pray. You can just go in there and pray to whatever God you want to. Really? Listen, listen, please, 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 please heed what I'm saying here. You have spiritual Babylon, the whore of Babylon, mystery Babylon. It's two things. In Revelation 17, it's talking about the woman, the woman, the whore, the harlot. Why is she a harlot? Israel was a harlot. Yes, she was. She was the mother of all harlots because she kept doing it over and over, going into false religion, worshiping false gods. And then they'd go into captivity, and they'd come out, and they'd do it again, and they'd come out, and they'd get delivered. God would deliver them. God would use their enemies to correct them, and then deliver them. This is what he's doing. But you, there's going to be one final time, and the time is now, that you cannot come out of it and go back in it. No. So, it's a false religion. It's going to have the name of Jesus Christ. Why does it have the name of Jesus Christ in mixed in? It isn't going to matter. It isn't going to matter because it's a false God. And Satan is the God of all false gods. The second beast. That's what they're preparing for. They're going to make the deadly wound happen. And then comes the second beast to heal that deadly wound. So, what are they, what are they getting ready for? Well... They're going to pull all religions in this. It's going to bear the name of Christ. And the reason it bears the name of Christ is because there's coming a false one, a false Christ. He's probably going to have the nails pierced in his hands. He's probably going to have the scars from that. He's going to be oh so holy. Yeah, and many well-meaning Christians are going to not even realize what's happening before them, they're going to know the prophecies and they're not, they're just, they're, they're being delusion, a strong delusion. If you're under a delusion, you don't know. You can't see. And listen, it's identified with Rome. Why? Because this is where they worship Jesus Christ falsely. And I'm sorry, this is not to offend Catholics. Listen. There were Catholics that woke me up to this. They know there's going to be a false prophet, a false pope to lead everyone astray. They, they it's their own, the last pope, it's their prophecy. But Catholicism is, is a duality, everyone. But it's in the churches of the Christians too, the Protestants. Yes, it is. Yes, it is just as much as it is in them. So this is why we cannot point fingers and wag tails. You know, we got to go into Revelation 2 and 3, and Jesus said, hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. It's just the same in the other churches that claim to be Protestant. You got false liars there. Well-meaning, some of them. Some of them are spurious. They know that they're leading others astray. It's time to come out of her, my people. So, yes, it's identified with Rome because he's the one that's going to bring in and usher in and baptize aliens. Remember, these are his words. Oh, but it's all about peace. And, you know, how dare you? It's not very Christ-like to put up a, a border wall. Really, well... What a, what a hypocrite, everyone, because you know why? The Vatican is a walled city, and it's a city within a city. It is its own city. It's its own government. It's its own political power. It's its own CIA. It's got its own intelligence agency. Oh, yes, it's got its own spies. It's got its own science department. It's got everything. It's its own little 
nation there. So yes, it's going to be identified with Rome. And why did I put New York in there? Listen, Times Square, go look, watch my other videos from back in the last year. Times Square sits there every spring or, or summer solstice and worships a false god doing their yoga, meditation. They're being led right there to do devil worship. And how many Christians are in there doing the yoga? I bet a lot, everyone. And then finally, it's going to move. The city, the spirituality is going to move to Jerusalem. Why? Because that's where the son of perdition stands in the holy place that he ought not and claims to be God. You know what? If you're waiting for that sign, good luck. Because I'll tell you why. That's going to be the final straw with God. That is what's going to bring God down and bring his wrath and lead them all over to Armageddon. Yes, it is. You can't wait for that, everybody. If that's what you're waiting for, to see what happens. And then you have well-meaning Christian pastors. I hope they're well-meaning and just misled. I hope they're not spurious Messiah prophet mouthpieces getting the body of Christ to sign petitions to support the building of the third temple oh come on we are the temple we are the temple we are the body of Christ we're the real deal here get off the beast come out of her my people if you're going to be drawn to Jerusalem then you're squashed you're toast That's where the son of perdition is going to be. This is where it's all going to go down. This is why we are to know that Israel, Jerusalem, Jerusalem is God's timepiece. And we are spiritual Israel, period. Doesn't matter if you want to go back to all this stuff about the lost tribes and all that stuff. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Jesus Christ died for all. And once someone accepts him as their savior, they are spiritual Israel. He's pruning off the branches that are not of him, everyone. That's right. And he's grafting in those. Go read Romans all about it. Paul explains it very well. And he tells you, do not get high-minded about this. Don't be looking down your nose. No, he tells you. So... Then you have the woman, the whore, the mother. Yes. Yes. Well, this is spiritual. This is false religion. This is, this is people falling under the doctrines of devils. Just like in the uh, book, I think it's 1st or 2nd Timothy, okay? Go, go do a search on doctrines of devils. They're in the church. They're in the body of Christ. Five out of seven churches are going to buy into this. That's the majority of Christians, everyone. We have, this is why Jesus is so stern on this. It's why he warned us. We cannot be in this. She is guilty of spiritual and religious abominations. Well-meaning if she is well-meaning. Destroyed by a political power that previously supported her. That's what ends up happening. You know why? Because the beast hates the whore. He hates her. Why does he hate her, everyone? If they're all worshiping this false doctrine, if they're all accepting the one world religion, why does he hate her? Because she claims to be of Christ, the real Christ. Hates her for it. That's why he deceives her. This is why they persecute her. This is why they put a face up there and a mouthpiece, a trumpet, and give you what you want to hear to distract you from what's really happening and where he's really leading the world and this nation. Yes. And many other nations are hopping on the bandwagon saying, I want out of this beast system, but then they're going into a worse beast system to escape the former. 
So the commercial city is what's Revelation 18, and that's Great Babylon, Babylon the Great, okay? That's a port, a great port. Jerusalem's not a port right now, everybody. It's not where all the wonderful delicacies of Tiffany's and, and all the expensive dainties are being sold and, and the one world commerce and the one world government. It's not all there yet. It will be. It'll all move. It will all move. And what do I mean by that? What do I mean that it's all going to move? Well, guess what? What did the king of Tyre do? do? He sent gold to King Solomon. He built the temple. He built the palaces. They're going to be over there building everyone. Google Maps already shows where they're going to put the third temple, where they're going to build it. It's going to be oh so magnificent and full of gold and, and very expensive things. And they're going to start pouring this stuff into Jerusalem. And all the kingdoms of the world are going to be mesmerized by Jerusalem. And so do you want to sign a petition for them to do that? Dear Lord, help us. Are we not aware of the times? Are we not awake? So, yes, Exodus has everything to do with this. Everything to do with this. God's why God said woe to those that go back down to Egypt. Can you just imagine that? Can you imagine that God went through all that in the wilderness, put the plagues on Egypt, when, took the people out of the wilderness under his miraculous hand and by, they walked out in his grace. They're, they were renewed, strengthened, and they turn around and want to go back to Egypt. And they did. They said, we're going to starve and die out here. We, we were better off in Egypt. Do you see now why they angered God so bad he wanted to kill them in the wilderness? And Moses interceded for them? Yes. He did. He interceded for them. And he said, Lord, if you kill the, all the, your people, what will the heathens say? What will the other nations think that he murdered and killed his people out in the wilderness and slayed them? Just wiped them off the face of the earth. And, and Moses pled with him and interceded. Because look, even when the fallen angels came and they messed up all the DNA, they messed up all the bloodlines. They did all these abominations with, with God's creation. He was grieved that he even made man. Yeah, grieved. God has feelings. God is going to take away and let them be slain of what is not of him. And so that's why he's purging you and I today. He's purging us. He's purging this is why he warns us about the whore of Babylon and the and Babylon. Babylon the Great. He's warning us, come out of her, my people. I'm going to slay it. I'm going to destroy it. For, part of it is self-destruction and the other part is him when he pours down his wrath. The tribulation is not the wrath. Was, was God delivering the Israelites out of Egypt, God's wrath upon his people? No, it was his wrath and his plagues upon the evil, upon those that were worshiping a false god and enslaving God's people. Because if you're enslaved in the beast, you can't serve God. You can't do, serve two masters, everyone. You can't. We have to get this right, everyone. We have to see the truth. We have to. Because if not, we're going to be like the sons of Korah, standing out in the wilderness. In Deuteronomy 11, 6. And be swallowed up. Our households, our tents, all of our substance and possessions going down at an open 
crevasse that opens up in the earth. It's happening now. It's happening now. He's warning us. He's showing us. Why is it that we're seeing these crevasses open up? Because he's like, listen, this is what I'm going to do. And if, if you're not in me, you're going to fall in these. They're going to open right up. I've seen the warnings. I've been told. I've been shown by the Holy Spirit. And it's physically manifested in my own yard. He told me, I'm purging you. I'm purging you. I'm doing away with the old and I'm doing a new thing in you. And you're going to look like you're going to die. You're going to face that. And you're going to rise above it. And my hand is going to deliver you out of it. And everyone's going to turn on you. And everything's going to look upside down. But my hand is upon you. My, did that mean I, I got a, a, you know, all these monetary blessings? No. It's actually gone the opposite direction. But I'm here. I'm sitting here. I trust in him. I do not lose sleep over having no income, everyone. I don't do it because I know he, all things are his. They're his. It's his kingdom. He's over this. He's above this. I trust in him. He's going to call me out into the wilderness. I've been in the spiritual wilderness. He's going to put us into the real wilderness. And this is what happens in Revelation 12. The woman, remember, this sign is coming in September. Some are disputing this date. I, I'm not going there. It doesn't matter when it is. But whenever it happens, that's when, that's when the deadly wound's going to be going down. That's the middle of the tribulation right there, everybody. That's when the two witnesses are going to come out. That is when the deadly wound happens, right after the two witnesses and... The, the woman is led to the wilderness and the earth helps the woman. The earth opens her mouth and swallows up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. That is happening right now spiritually. It's going to happen spiritually first and then we're going to go into the wilderness. He's going to actually be like supernatural at that time. And it's going to be too just... Two angels could come to your door and they're going to say what you're going to need to know and it's going to be sent by the Holy Spirit. You're going to know it's the Holy Spirit. Test the spirits. Yes, test the spirits, everyone. And so you're going into the wilderness. So I'm sorry, everyone, if I sound forceful. But it's about your soul. It's about other souls that you're going to speak to. It, you are to pull these people out of the fire of damnation. And call them into God's protective wing by the truth. Many are being misled. Our own brothers and sisters are falling in to these spiritual hell holes. We cannot let Christ be a stumbling block for us. We have been given all that God has told us in his word to warn us and prepare us. And it's so important, everyone. It's so important. So now you can see why he takes the woman to the wilderness. He's purging her. He's protecting her. And just like Revelation 12 says, the earth helped the woman and swallowed up the flood that came out of the great dragon's mouth. We are seeing this physically and we're being told spiritually what's coming. And so we can know that we have to get out of this Babylon. We have to get off the beast. We cannot be riding the political beast. We are got to prepare to go into the wilderness, everybody. And we're going to watch God's hand supernaturally use nature, use the earth to defeat the very thing 
that threatens us, that is a threat, that is a danger, that is after us, that is wanting to devour us. Listen, God warns and warns and warns. And if you know his word, you see something happening in the earth and you're like, oh, wow, that's like X, Y, Z in scripture. And so he's telling you something and he's purging us, everyone. So, you know, we all have to do what we have to do. But here's the thing. We can start to pull ourselves away from that. And I'm going to tell you something. Be very careful about using that word detach. Because detaching, if you aren't doing it by the Lord purging you, you're going to find out you're going to get cold, hardened. You're going to detach from the very things that God's waking you up to, to get you to see the truth. Be very careful with that. You know, it, that's why this whole new age thing is yoga and meditation. It's teaching you to detach. We don't do yoga. And when we meditate, we pray. We pray a direct 911 call to our Lord and Savior. That's right. To our Father in Heaven. Jehovah, yes, that is what we do. Well, I love you all. I'll be back soon. God bless each and every one of you.